Court TV Live. We are inside an Osceola, Georgia court this morning. Day two of the pretrial motions hearing underway for the man charged with murdering high school teacher Tara Grinstead. Ryan Duke, a former student of Grinstead's, is accused of killing her 16 years ago. His alleged accomplice, Bo Dukes, is in court right now. Let's go in live. Thank you so much, Judge. Um, and Judge, uh, before we begin, I'd ask permission to um, treat him as a hostile witness and because he's an adverse party under Rule 24-4-611C, um, I have the ability, since he is an adverse party, to lead him. For today's purposes, Matt. Right. Yes, for today's purposes. Yes, exactly. Thank you so much. All right, and I want the record to be clear and reflect that Ms. Mose, Mr. Duke's counsel is here with the present this morning. Thank you. All right. And I also want, I just wanted to put on the record that I'm limiting my cross-examination to Giglio issues, not full cross-examination and trial examination. I think that's appropriate. Thank All right. You. Thank you so much, Judge. All right. And you're, you're permitted to cross-examine. Great. Thank you so much. Um, Mr. Dukes, did Agent Shaldell interview you first on June 16th, 2016? Under the advice of counsel, I'm invoking my Fifth Amendment right not to testify. Um, did, you, did your lawyer set up a subsequent interview on February 19th, 2017? I'm also not going to answer that question. Either. And Judge, we would um, we do not believe that the fact that he had an interview would invoke his Fifth Amendment right to counsel. Um, yeah, sure. I think I think anything regarding whether it was the interview or not surrounding the interview uh, would go into issues that are still being. Um, still up for debate and consideration in other cases, Your Honor. I agree completely with Ms. Mullis. These issues are on appeal pending before the court, and he has a pending indictment in Ben Hill County, and I believe that that, that is the correct response. I'll give you the last say, Ms. Merchant, if you have any further argument. Thank you, Judge. Um, the, the fact that he had an interview um, cannot subject him, or did not have an interview, cannot subject him to criminal charges. My specific question was if his lawyer set up a second interview um, for him, and so we don't believe that that would implicate any Fifth Amendment. The very indictments in Wilcox County involve those interviews that she is asking those questions about and whether those statements were made, if and in those I'm going to allow the invitation of this Fifth Amendment privilege to that question. Thank you, Judge. Yes, um, the interview that you had on February 19th, 2017, that was with um, Mr. Bowden, Mr. Rigby, Mr. Um, or Ms. Schwartz, and then your lawyer, Mr. Fox, correct? On the advice of counsel, I'm also going to invoke my Fifth Amendment right. Um, and it lasted approximately 30 minutes. Oh, I'm also invoking my Fifth Amendment. Thank you. Um, and was it during that meeting that Mr. Bowden told you that if you cooperated and you were not involved in the homicide, but you were only involved in the cover-up, that they would be in a position to help you? Under the advice of counsel, I'm invoking my Fifth Amendment right not to self incriminate And it was shortly after Mr. Bowden made this statement to you that you made a statement that implicated Ryan Duke. Under the advice of counsel, I'm invoking my Fifth Amendment right not to self-incriminate. Do you believe that you had a deal? Under the advice of counsel, I'm invoking my Fifth Amendment right not to self-incriminate. Um, in fact, did you then subsequently text friends of yours saying that you believed you had a deal? Under the advice of counsel, I'm invoking my Fifth Amendment right not to self-incriminate. Would you have given Agent Shaldell statements if Mr. Bowden had not told you he was in a position to help you? Under the advice of counsel, I'm invoking my Fifth Amendment right not to testify. Did you know Paul Bowden prior to this meeting? Under the advice of counsel, I'm invoking my Fifth Amendment right not to testify. And Judge, that one I would, I would argue does not have any um, incriminating statements, whether or not he knew Paul Bowden prior to this meeting. Well, Your Honor, being that uh, Mr. Bowden was the current D district attorney in this case, any implications or testimony, anything that he had some sort of meeting with him or knew him in any way could lead to incriminate, could incriminate him or lead to incriminating him. Any further from the state? No, you're not. I'm going to require the witness to answer that question. Thank you, sir. Personally, I did not know Mr. Bowden. Had you ever met him prior to that day? Not that I recall. It's possible, though. Were you friends with his son, Josh Bowden? Yes. Had you ever been to the Bowden's home? I can't recall a time where I ever was. Thank you. No further questions. Okay. Ms. Mullis, thank you for being present this morning. Uh, nothing from your table, Ms. Park or Mr. Rigby.
Just a, just a couple of questions. Um, how long ago was it that you were friends with Josh Bowden? On the advice of counsel, I'm also not going to answer that question. Judge, he answered that question for co-counsel about being friends with her, and that's just a, a response of time that would not be uh, something subject to the Fifth Amendment right. Any further? No. All right, I'm going to require you to stand to that. Could you repeat the question? How long ago was it that you were friends with Josh Bowden? 22 years ago. Would that have been the last time that you'd seen Josh Bowden? No, the last time I'd seen him would probably be somewhere around, you know, I couldn't even give you an estimate, 2005 or six, somewhere around in there. Yes. Had Paul Bowden ever been to your home? Not that I recall. Had Paul Bowden ever been to your family home? Not that I recall. Thank you. All right. Thank you, Mr. Uh, I, I, before he leaves, I did want to put a different issue on the record, um, whether or not he intends to invoke his Fifth Amendment right um, at, if he is called as a witness at trial at this point, just for planning purposes so that we can figure out some evidentiary issues. Um, I'm going to let you and Ms. Mullis discuss that later at your leisure, okay? I don't think that's a proper inquiry uh, at this time. All right, uh, we'll be adjourned then. Thank you. Thank you. Did I have one other? Yeah. Yes. Sorry, not, not with this witness, though. One other matter before we adjourn. Okay, good, good. You can step down. Because we're coming back, I believe, um, with Agent Sheldell by, via Zoom. And um, what time did y'all want to do that? Um, we're here to talk about 3.30. Without him rearranging his schedule, 3.30 is when he would be available. He did indicate, obviously, the court needs him earlier that he could ask his supervisor to get someone else to fill in um, for the polygraph. But 3.30 would not require him to reschedule anything. Is that okay with you? That's, as far as you that's know? fine, Judge. All right. Now, um, Mr. Ryan Duke, of course, has the right to be present. Are we able to... They, yeah, but you're going to plan, I suspect. Yes, they Too actually, bad. the jail is wonderful at Zooming. We've been able to have Zoom meetings with him fairly regularly. They that's, have, that's great. It is, um, it's, it's very easy. What we can do is um, we will send, we can send a Zoom link around, and we can send it to the jail like we have done in the past when we've met with him okay. so that they have that. We have no problem taking care of that. All right. And if you'll supply whatever information is necessary, Ms. Hart, uh, to Ms. Merchant, about Agent Shadell's location and yours, uh, I think you have my information, so we'll see you on 3.30 tomorrow. What else do we need to discuss? I right? wanted to put one other thing on the record as far as the, um, the Giglio issue, um, since we're appearing via Zoom. Last night, um, I went back and reviewed the, all of the, the transcripts in the case, some of the transcripts in the case, um, after the testimony, and I'd like the court to take judicial notice of Paul Bowden's testimony at Bo Duke's trial. He was called as a witness about this deal, and he um, offered contrary testimony under oath at that hearing. Um, specifically, he was asked, do you represent to him, Bo Dukes, that you were in a position, if he did these things, to potentially make favorable recommendations? Mr. Bowden testified, I told him that if he was truthful with us, cooperated, and was not involved in the homicide, only the cover-up, that we were in a position that we could help him. And then he was asked, in a position to help, yes. So that directly contradicts his testimony from yesterday, but I don't need to recall him for this because it's already sworn under oath. But what I would ask is that I be able to um, submit this transcript. We have a certified copy of the transcript. Submit that as part of the record. This was from the Wilcox County. This is from the Wilcox trial. County case, yes, Judge. Okay. So, Judge, we obviously disagree that it's contrary to what he testified to yesterday, but to clarify, um, I just want to make sure, is counsel talking about the Jackson Deno testimony or the trial testimony? Because I believe... I believe he testified in the Jackson Dinner as well. Okay. Um, I, I'll submit it um, to both. It's, uh, we can submit both if they would prefer. We can submit both yes. of the testimony. Well, submitting it to the record in this case is permissible. Yes, um, no objection so, to that. I just want to make sure that both are submitted. That's not a problem. Um, we would also ask the court to then, um, Jason Shadell testified as to that issue as well in that same trial. Um, well, one, we would ask that the entire Jackson Dene um, transcript be submitted, and then any portion of Jason Shadell's um, testimony during trial that related to the Jackson Dene issues. Um, basically, anything from that trial that related to the issues we've been talking about, we would ask that that all be part of the made part of this trial transcript. So, so I will submit the entire Jackson Dene transcript. I will submit Mr. Bowden and Mr. Shadell's trial testimony. Perfect. In its entirety. 
in its entirety or on the issue? I mean, it doesn't matter. Does it, it doesn't matter, Judge, to me. If it, Jason Shadell obviously testified to a lot of other things other than Bo's testimony um, and how that occurred, or Bo's statement and how that occurred. But I think I'm fine with all of it coming in as well, and the court can narrow down what it thinks is relevant to the issue. I can I can send them to Ms. Hart and Mr. Rigby first, and if they're if, if you want just and then you can tell me if you want more. No, I'm fine with all of it. That's fine. Uh, well, the admissibility of it is a second is another question, of course. Uh, you can go ahead and file it, and we'll address it uh, whenever it comes up. Great, thank okay. you, Judge. All right. Uh, thank you. Anything further? I just wanted to clarify, so we're going to get a Zoom link for 3.30 tomorrow where none of us are in the courtroom. We're all remote. Is that right? I'll be either Sylvester or Tifton, okay. so I'm not sure. Uh, and I'm did I understand the court to indicate that you wanted um, to make sure that defense counsel knew how to contact Jason Shadell? They did. She, she messaged okay. him yesterday right after court. So I... I did. As soon as I got permission from the state to contact him on the cell phone again, I, I emailed Judge, I have never okay. said that they could not contact him. All right. Him. Um, will y'all um, make sure Mr. Duke is available at that time out of the jail? Um, yes. Or is Mr. Rogers? Okay. 3 30. Yes. Anything else y'all can think of? Have a good day. We'll be adjourned. All right. That was it. The big confrontation between Ryan Duke as he shakes hands with his uh, attorneys and heads back to his holding cell, and he'll be off uh, back to jail, waiting trial in May. Bo Dukes takes the stand, but doesn't say much. Still with us, trial attorney, Jenny Alcotti. She's in Columbus, Ohio, and law professor in University of Georgia and former prosecutor, Melissa Redman in Atlanta. I guess we should have seen this one coming, uh, Melissa. All the big buildup, and then uh, the fifth comes back to, to kill it. Um, your thoughts on the attorney's recommendation for him not to say anything because he is uh, he's got an appeal and he also has pending litigation against him yeah i think it, it was it should have anticipated that he has a lot going on right and so for him to answer any questions um i think would be dangerous if I'm his counsel that would be my advice to sit down right at this point we have you know too much to deal with without adding um inserting yourself into ryan this trial um if we can avoid it at all so, Jenny, um, how does Bo Dukes then come into Ryan Dukes' trial? Um, he'll obviously be a big focal point still from the defense, and they can almost use this on some level to their advantage um, because they could sort of project him to be the villain without him actually getting evaluated by jurors. Because let's fast forward, he's not going to take the stand during the trial, right? I mean, this is going to play itself out again the same way it is today. Yeah, and I think that goes to defense's point today where she was like, if he's going to invoke his Fifth Amendment right, we need to plan for how we're going to approach this case and this trial. So it's a lot of he said, she said right now with different witnesses. And unfortunately, one of their main witnesses for both prosecution and defense is Bo Duke. So as it stands right now, we really don't know how this trial could go because there is a lot of contradictory testimony. Melissa, do you still use Bo Dukes if you're the defense as, as a central theme in, in the trial in May? I think you have to. I think you have to try to paint that picture for the jury that he was made promises in exchange for his testimony, for his statement, and that it was in his best interest to put the actual murder on Ryan Dukes. Um, to get this deal. Jenny, would this be a case that you would anticipate that the defendant does take the stand and explain, and then if he, if he does, he can get into the Bo Duke stuff a little bit with more detail. Uh, you know, if his story is that he was just helping his friend Bo, um, but it also opens him up to a ton of other issues on cross. What, what, what's your initial thought, just, you know, sort of from an outsider uh, looking at this case? It, w would you be shocked if he took the stand? I would absolutely be shocked if he did take the stand. Um, I think if he does, he's opening the realm for a lot of cross-examination. And because specifically this is a homicide case, you're opening the door to everything, every type of evidence. Your whole past is going to be put up there for the world to see. So it's taking a lot of risk if they do put him up there. 
And, and uh, Melissa, your thoughts, because he does have this confession um, and the allegations, well, he was, he was under the influence of drugs, they should throw the confession out. W what are your thoughts? On the stand, or, or would that be a shocker to you? Um, it wouldn't shock me because he does have to explain that confession. If he's alleging that his confession was false, yes, you can bring an expert to talk about how false confessions happen, but I think um, the jury would want to hear from him how under the influence of us was going on in his life at the time. Does he have any other issues that will contribute to him being susceptible to making a false confession? And also, he has to explain that glove. Of course, this jury is going to be, I did murder her, but I did a bow move the body, that's the glove, that's where the glove came from. They can try mm -hmm. to get all of that out for the witnesses, but I would not be surprised if he takes a and try to explain it. No. Yeah. All right, we'll take a break here. Uh, I want to thank Jenny Alcotti for her expert time and, uh, um, and expertise this morning. We're going to step aside, take a break. More after this. Stay with us.